In this video, we'll discuss Lambda URLs, which is a brand new feature released by AWS that will pave the way for creating APIs without the need for API gateway. So before this feature for creating a serverless API on AWS, so these are the two primarily services that you use. One is API gateway and then AWS Lambda as a backend. So in this architecture, we are paying for both API gateway as well as our Lambda function. But with Lambda URLs, we get a dedicated HTTP endpoint for our Lambda function. Hence, there's no need to configure external API gateway and this feature is free of cost. That means you would be only paying for the Lambda billing. So user would be able to directly hit the Lambda from the HTTP endpoint. In this video, I will explain Lambda URLs by comparing it with existing features that we have in API Gateway. So this is the function URL format. So you have uh, something called URL ID and then there is a hard coded Lambda hyphen URL, then the region where your Lambda is and then dot on and then dot AWS. You don't have any option to change this. Here URL ID is provided by AWS you don't have any control on this URL ID. So this is one of the drawback that you have with Lambda HTTP, HTTPS endpoints. I will share with you how you can make custom URLs for your Lambda endpoints. So when I say this is a new feature, that means you get an option to enable HTTP URLs for Lambdas while creating the Lambda. But what about the Lambdas which we have already created? So for that, uh, you have uh, one new option in configuration. Let me go to console to show this. So this is my Lambda console. And let's say if I talk about this particular Lambda, Athena Dynamo DB. So this I created last year. And if I open this, you will find that in function URL, I don't have any URL here because this is a new section added by AWS in Lambda console. And let's say what if I want to enable function URL for my Athena DynamoDB, I can just go to configure and here you'll find it a new section function URL new. And here I can just click on create function URL and enable my function URL. So this feature can be enabled for my existing lambdas also. So I'll cover more details in my demo video. For now, let's go to the next section. What about security and authentication for the Lambda URLs? You can control the access to your Lambda with auth type parameter that we have. So this determines how Lambda authenticates or authorizes uh, requests to your function URLs. We have a very limited option. So the first option is uh, AWS IAM. And with this option, Lambda uses identity and access management to authenticate and authorize requests. You can choose this option if you want only uh, authenticated IAM users and roles to invoke your function via the function URL. So users who need to invoke your Lambda function must have the Lambda invoke function URL permission enabled. Let me show you the screenshot. This is what you see on your Lambda console when you try to create function URL. So the second option as you can see on screen is none this means no security at all. So your URL can be invoked publicly without any authentication. And also internally, if you go in details with this mode, your Lambda's resource based policy would be allowing public access. Let me show you on AWS console also. So this is the configure function URL for my existing Lambda functions. And if I click on none here, you can see here that uh, the principal here is star. That means anybody can invoke my function. The action here is invoke function URL. That means whosoever wants to access your Lambda, they should have permission invoke function URL. And who is the principal here? It's star here. Anybody can invoke the service. In IAM role, you use the same policy, but you provide the principals who can access your Lambda function through URLs. So now let's check how you can invoke your Lambda functions. So you can directly invoke your Lambda function by hitting the URL from browser 
postman or curl command another very important aspect in lambda url is uh, routing is not supported here hence all the requests to the sub paths will go to the base path because this is a single lambda function so let me give you one example so you can see that uh, here we have three different routes so one is star that means the base path another one is items slash one that means i want to get item number one and another could be you know items so maybe uh, this could be a post call with some request body so if i try to hit these three different urls i would be redirected to the same lambda function so like in api gateway i don't have any option to route to different backends based on different sub path because lambda in itself is a single backend the routing logic should be custom built by you in lambda for example uh, the the lambda request body will have this information so whatever sub path you are hitting here so after the slash you would be getting that information in your lambda request and you can deduce this information and decide which resource you need to call so i'll give you more details when i show you the demo on function urls so stay tuned for that then this works for both get and post so when using post you can pass the request body also so you can create crud operations with lambda urls so basically you get raw path in the request body and this raw path contains the path after the base url let me give you this example from aws website so this is a request payload format and you can see here this raw path is the path that we provide after the base url so here uh, like i gave the example item slash one can be found if you hit that then uh, you get raw query string also whatever query string that you pass in your lambda so you will find all the details here by using these two fields you can create custom logic and you can extend your lambda to include as much functionality as you want i hope you understand this point so let me give you one example also let's say that uh, after the base path i provide items and then the item id so i can just fetch the raw path and then based on the raw path i can uh, call the dynamo db to uh, read the value from dynamo db backend and then for any post call i can just call slash items and i can choose the method uh, post and pass the request body i will be able to save that into the dynamo db so this custom logic you have to write by your own in your lambda function so we know that uh, for apis request throttling is a very important feature by which you restrict users to avoid flooding your servers with api requests but, uh, with lambda you have to implement out of the box solution with reserved concurrency with reserved concurrency you define the number of lambdas that could be triggered for a particular aws account uh, so this is a out of the box solution so and by using this you can restrict the count of lambda function invocations thereby causing a 429 error in case request exceed beyond your expectations so we have already discussed that we don't have the feature to provide custom domains uh, in lambda url because aws provides us the lambda url by itself but if we talk about api gateway so we can easily register a domain through route 53 and use that with api gateway for a user friendly domain name but with lambda urls we don't have that option we have to implement that using cloudfront after discussing all these features so do you think we still need an api gateway because ultimately we need some url to hit our backend servers and when we talk about lambda as our backend service a serverless offering we are getting a new feature by which there would be a url so do we need an api gateway in between the answer according to me is yes because as i explained in previous slides lambda urls can implement what api gateway does for the basic functionality but still there are many such use cases which still require api gateway for example uh, what if you want to add custom authorization or want to implement cognito user pools or any open id connect providers lambda doesn't give us that permission right so we only have iam as our security feature also the throttling in api gateway is much more detailed and advanced as compared to what we can implement with reserved concurrency 
Also with API Gateway, we can implement caching and request validation, which is not there in Lambda. And yeah, we can use CloudFront again with Lambda function for caching. But I mean, what is the point of uh, escaping API Gateway if we need, we have to use additional services, right? So at the end, let's discuss what are the use cases of Lambda URLs. So first and the foremost is uh, local development. So you need to develop your Lambda function and test it again and again. So with this feature, you don't have to uh, set up API gateway. You can directly hit uh, your Lambda through browser or you can use CURL or our go-to app like Postman and you will be able to test the functionality. Second use case is uh, when you don't need advanced functionalities of API gateway, for example, request validations or throttling or custom authorizers or caching. For example, uh, you are implementing a simple webhook handler or a simple service wherein you just need to hit the URL. That's it. So in that case, uh, I think Lambda URL is a very good feature. And the third point, which I feel is uh, long running API calls. So if you have used API gateway, you might be aware that uh, it has default timeout of 29 seconds. Every call which is taking more than 29 seconds would be getting timeout error. So with Lambda, we know that uh, uh, it's 900 seconds is the timeout or 15 minutes. So it's just, you know, kind of fire and forget type of behavior because any API call which you will be implementing uh, should return you within that time. So I think uh, these three are go to use cases when you have Lambda URL feature and uh, this is the most important one. So I think even in my next videos, I'll be testing everything using uh, Lambda URLs, whatever I'll be implementing with Lambda. So this is it from Lambda URLs theory part. I will be covering the demo in next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.